Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. Today is day two of Craftmas, and we're going to be jumping into a project with Distress Oxide inks. We're going to be doing a stamped layered card today. If you'd like to see which supplies we're going to be using, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. Today, we're going to be creating with Distress Oxides, and we're going to be doing some layered stamping. Now, for Distress Oxides, I love working on craft stock. The colors just absolutely pop on the darker paper. Now, for stamps, we're going to be pulling in something old and something new. For our something old, we are going to be looking at stamp set Winterscape CMS 428. And from that set, we're going to be pulling this adorable snowman and this cozy winter cottage with trees. Now, the new set that we're going to be pulling from today is going to be Jolly Holiday CMS 474. So within the stamp set, I'm kind of thinking I really want to incorporate the peppermint stick and this piece of holly here. I think that could make a really interesting border. And I'm also really liking the sentiment. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to incorporate all of these elements. So let's set these aside for a moment. And we're going to bring in the Tim Holtz stamping platform. So. When I'm doing a stamped layer technique, this is my favorite tool for setting up my layers. So I'm just going to go ahead, open this up, and I'm going to place our craft stock right down here. So looking at this, I think we want to go sideways. If we're going sideways, let's see here. I want to make sure that I'm centered. If I line that up. Hmm, maybe at the base. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to take a chance and just go right in the center. Okay. So I'm just going to put these down. And I'm going to start with the cottage and tree line first. So let's get that stamp. That's going to be in the background. Let's see. Right about here should be pretty good. And then... How are we going to put the snowman in? Let's move that bit more here. And I'm going to have the snowman kind of like right here. So it's kind of my thought process at the moment. The snowman's going to be in the foreground. We're going to have the cottage in the background. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so setting that down and we're going to close the stamping platform lid up the stamp and I'm just going to turn this and now we're going to ink that up. And for inking, of course, we're going to be using some Distress Archival Black Soot. So I'm just going to try to hold that, put our ink down, and then I'm going to go in and start coloring the image with some Distress Oxide reinkers. Good, we've got that, applying good firm pressure. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, that will work. I don't need a perfect stamped image yet. Right now, we're just kind of getting the outline of what we want to color in, and then I can go back after I've got my oxide on here and give some more definition to those lines. But right now, what I want to do is create my palette of colors off to the side. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit and right here, I'm going to create my palette. So let's see, we're gonna start with some Rustic Wilderness. Let me give that a good shake. And we'll put a dot of that right here. Then I'm going to 
want a little bit of vintage photo. And shaking it up, making sure that we get the mixing ball. Okay, let's put some of that right here. Good. I'm going to need a teeny bit of red for the chimney. Okay, put that right here. And that is lumberjack plaid. And then we're going to need some picket fence. Now, picket fence technically says distress ink, but this is an opaque ink. And as you can hear, there is still a mixing ball in there. And we'll go ahead and put that right here. I need a fair bit of that. Okay, now I've got some water off to the side to clean my brush in. We're going to take a fine detailer water brush and we're going to start painting. So when I start an image like this, I want to start with my darker colors first and then work my way to the lighter colors. And in between, I can always dry things off and stamp before adding more layers. So I'm just going to start with that rustic wilderness. I'm just dabbing that on and I will definitely be going back with some of that picket fence to pick up some of those little snow areas. But right now, just focusing on those dark colors and just dabbing that on lightly with the brush. I'm definitely going to need to go in with the heat tool and make sure that everything is dry because I don't want my colors to bleed onto one another. So just using a light hand with the brush is hopefully going to help me cut down on the need to dry things off with the heat tool because we don't want to put too much heat directly onto the stamping platform. That could potentially warp the base and that would be terrible for trying to stamp later. So we're just trying to make sure that we're not adding too much pigment in one area or another. This is looking pretty good so far. Oxides are so fun to paint with because they are very opaque and it just it gives a different feel than the regular distress inks. It adds a bit of dimension. And then of course you have that really cool oxidizing effect. As soon as we get the water on here, we will start noticing a bit of a change. Like off to the side, we've got really vibrant pigments, but once the water comes in, we start getting that little bit of film for oxidation. And that just, it's so cool. I just, I love it. It's got that vintage vibe and it's pretty unique. Okay, so just about done with these trees. So you've got the pre pretty much you've got the idea of what we're doing. We are stamping an image and then we are painting an image. And then in between layers, if I want to get more than one color variation on here, we're going to need to stamp again before going back in with more color. So right now, let's go ahead and put this on fast forward and then we're gonna start building up our scene. So here is layer one. We've colored in all of the basics, but now it's gonna be time to do another stamped layer, and then we're going to go in and add some details. The next thing I do want to do for adding color in, I want to go in with a little bit of stormy sky. That could give us a little bit of shadow to play with. So we're gonna add a little of that. And I think I'd like a teeny tiny bit of fossilized amber because then I can give those windows a little bit of a lighted glow. Okay, a little bit right here. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ink up the stamp and we're going to stamp again and see how things look. So just off to the side, I'm inking up the stamp with more of that black soot distress archival ink 
Now we're going to take the stamping pad, we're going to close it, and let's see what we get. Good firm pressure. And lift. Very good. So we have our next layer here. We can see all the details brought back. That's looking really good. I just want to add in some highlights here. So we're going to be taking a little bit of that stormy sky. We'll add that. We'll add that in. Let's see. Just a little bit here. A little over here. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, pretty good. And now I want to take that little bit of Fossilite Amber. I'm going to see if I can't get those windows. And I think there's some shutters on there. Yes, there are. I'm going to just give that a teeny tiny green tint on the side. Good. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So we're just gonna go in for that final stamping on this layer. Just adding more ink to the stamp. And let's see how that goes. Okay, pressing down and lifting up. Let's see what we got. Perfect. So we have all of our detail in this layer. Absolutely loving that. Now I'm going to give that a quick dry and then we're going to go in with the snowman and add another dimension. So we're just going to take the image and we're going to slide that over just so that we can see what we're stamping. Right here should be good. Put our magnets back. To make it easier for me to pick these up, I did encase the magnets that came with the stamping platform in some washi tape. It just gives me an easy tab that I can grab and lift. Okay, so we're gonna take the snowman and we're gonna put him right here. That should be good, because he's gonna be kind of in the foreground and then we've got the cabin in the background. And I'm definitely gonna be adding in some more oxide along here to get more snow on the ground. But right now, let's just get that snowman scooped up, and we're going to lay down that next layer. Also, I'm going to move one of these magnets around and just put that off to the side so we've got layers. Oh, water. I'm going to get water there. Okay, good. And of course, we're going to ink that up. Oh, smudge just a little, but I can wipe that up with the water. Whoops. Okay. So going back in with the archival black soot, putting that right onto the snowman. And we'll stamp that down. Okay. Good. Applying good firm pressure. Let's see what we got. Not quite perfect, but that's fine because we have got some layers to paint in. So you've seen essentially how we add paint here. And right now we're going to expand our palette just a little bit. Let's get the camera back. There we go. Uh, the colors that I'm going to be adding are going to include Carved Pumpkin, Lucky Clover, yeah, just Carved Pumpkin and Lucky Clover. Okay. I kind of want a darker blue, but I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? I want some prize ribbon. Let's add some prize ribbon. Why not? There. That'll look nice. And the Lucky Clover. All right, we've got a nice full paint palette here. So, let's add in those colorful details for the snowman first. 
starting this time I want to start with some of the fossilized amber that's going to go right on the broomstick Ooh, definitely like that as a color here it's gonna look really good okay uh, let's see mm, let's go right into the vintage photo for the broomstick why not okay and what next let's go for a little orange for the hat wait no orange for the nose what am I thinking just dab that there all right so we're gonna put the rest of this on fast forward as we paint the rest of our snowman <music> Here is the finished winter scene. Now we need to add a border to our card along with a little bit of added greenery. For this, we're going to be pulling in one of this year's stamp sets. This is Jolly Holiday CMS 474. For the border, I want to use this wonderful peppermint stripe. And we're going to be going all the way around the card. And after, for a little bit of added flourish, we're going to be adding in these beautiful holly leaves. So let's go ahead and get this set up. I'm just going to make sure that the card is stuck down good. Okay. And let's line this up as best we can. Let's see, I think I want this side to be right here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stamp this out. And then I'm going to be coloring it in and we're going to be using more of the picket fence and lumberjack plaid so first things first we're grabbing that archival ink and I'm quickly just tapping that right onto the peppermint stripe and we'll see what sort of impression we get okay closing that down stamping that okay let's see Good, that's what I'm going for. So next we're going to paint this in with a bit of red and white. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put this on fast forward as we do our border. Then we will come back into real time when we add the holly leaves. Okay, we've got our border done. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. We've done some layering and now we have a really fun peppermint stripe going all the way around our card as a border. That, yeah, I definitely like that. That's very, very festive. So the next thing that I want to do is to add just a little bit of holly on the corners. So we're gonna do two bunches of holly see here I think I want to do one bunch here and we'll do another bunch over here so let's go ahead put our magnets back and we're just going to turn this a little bit oh, I want to move this over just a hair. good so we're going to put the holly right here and we're going to be layering that with some rustic wilderness a little bit of Lucky Clover, and of course, more Lumberjack plaid. So we're just gonna pick that stamp right up, and we're gonna stamp it out with the Distress Black Archival Soot, and we will add our bunches of holly. So this 
is almost the last stamping step. We're going to stamp this out in this corner and over here. And once the holly is done, we're then going to add our sentiment. Okay, so you've seen the stamping and the layering. So let's go ahead and again, put this on fast forward as we add in those holly branches. Here is the finished holly. Definitely happy with that and loving the layering going on with this. So the last thing that we need to do for this card is to create a sentiment. And we're going to be adding in a sentiment from the same stamp set. We're going to be using this one, May Your Christmas Be Happy and Bright. But instead of using Distress Oxide this time, I am going to be using a little bit of Tarnished Brass Distress Paint. And that is a metallic and that should pop very nicely over the oxides. So I'm just going to put that on here and I'm going to take the stamping platform. I'm actually going to disconnect that one piece so that I can show you what I'm doing. Now off to the side, I'm putting down a splash of distress paint. And with a brayer, I'm going to get that onto the mini brayer and I'm going to put that directly onto the stamp. And then we're going to stamp that right onto our card. I like using the brayer because it's a quick and easy way to evenly transfer the paint. Okay, we've got the paint on, quickly putting the stamp platform back together and stamping that down. Applying good firm pressure and I'm hoping that our first impression will come out beautifully. But if not, because we're on the stamping platform, it will be very easy to add more paint. Let's see what we got. Okay, it is a bit splotchy, but not a big deal. Let's go ahead, we're gonna add another layer of distressed paint. And hopefully this layer will make it nice and visible. Okay, I'm trying to stamp that again. And almost needs just a little bit more paint. It's getting there, but the text is pretty fine. So we do need a little bit more paint buildup to make that text really pop. But that is the beauty of the stamping platform. If something doesn't quite come out, re-ink it and stamp again. Okay, let's see how this does. Yes, now I am happy with that. We have our sentiment. Ooh, that one letter is being a little stubborn, that M. Let's see if I can just kind of re-ink that. Okay, one more time. Just trying to get that M to come out. There we go, now I got the M. All right, let's pull this out of here and take a closer look at our finished card. But before we do take a look at it, I am taking the stamp that has the distress paint and I'm putting water right onto that immediately so that I can wipe the distress paint off the stamp. If it dries, that would not be a good thing. So just wiping that off, getting rid of that paint. There we go, our stamp nice and clean. And quickly wiping up the distress paint that I put down as well. I like to clean as I go, that way I don't end up with any unexpected residue on my work surface. Okay, let's set aside the stamping platform for the moment. I've got the card and I do want to do a quick clean on these oxides before I accidentally set a card in it. That would be very tragic. Okay, wiping that up. A little bit more water. A 
There we go, much better. Now we have a clean work surface to set our card on. Now let's take a look. Here is our stamped and layered card using Distress Oxides to color in our winter scene and then adding a touch of metallic with Distress Paint stamping at the end. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner for some Christmas holiday fun. Here we've created a stamped and layered card on craft stock, and I'm absolutely loving the way the Distress Oxide reinkers pop. So don't forget, we are in the middle of Craftmas, so please do stay tuned for day number three. Until next time, happy crafting!